we have a very interesting guest today. We have Miro Miroslavov from the Office R&D team heading over to this interview today. Um, I want to give you a brief introduction about Miro before we jump into today's question. So Miro is an entrepreneur, a blogger, and an ex-software engineer. So you left that behind a little bit. Uh, in 2015, he co-founded Office R&D. Uh, which is considered to be the world's leading co-working and flexible workspace management platform. I'm sure many of you guys heading over into flexible uh, workplaces yourself as well. So maybe you might have to check with the team there if they're using Office R&D. Um, he grew the company from an idea to a multi-million dollar company that saves, serves hundreds of thousands of co-working spaces or users. Sorry, I should say users. Um, he's a big fan of the flexible co-working as, as well. Um, and it's really his mantra, it's his mission, right? It's to making flexible working the way of working, the, basically the normal way of working. So Miro, welcome to the show. Thanks, Lucas. Appreciate being here. Very good. So maybe in your own words, right? I, I spoke about it a little bit already, but maybe in your own words, what is Office R&D all about? Uh, yeah, I think you, you nailed it. So Office R&D is really all about uh, flexible working. Uh, and, and what we're trying to do is we try to power this whole flexible workspace and overall flexible working revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, so instead of being locked in your uh, HQ, in your boring office, uh, we are big believers that the future of work is actually working from where you feel uh, most productive, where you feel most comfortable for the type of job that you're currently working on. So um, we now do all sorts of things and, and, and different types of work actually requires different type of working environment. So that's why we believe flexible working actually can boost productivity, uh, boost engagement of people, and also overall the work-life balance. And there are so many benefits mm -hmm. of, of, of the flexible working as a, as a thing. <laughs> Very good. Maybe tell us something interesting about the company as a, for a bit of a background for the listeners. Maybe maybe how many clients you're currently working with or how many visitors are coming to the website or you know prices that you've won. Something that gives a bit of an idea of the company. Sure. Well, so we currently are a uh, relatively early stage startup. Uh, although we are 65 people worldwide in uh, split between uh, three offices. Um, Growing really fast, so we started late 2015. Uh, today we are at about 3.5, 4 million ARR. Uh, mm -hmm. So and 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 keep growing. So that's about 700 customers, mm -hmm. uh, or about we power something like um, 150,000 uh, users. So these are co-working members and flexible workspace members overall. Um, and these are probably about 2,000 buildings that operate as a flexible uh, workspaces. Very interesting. That gives really a good, good roundabout uh, of who is using the product. Um, you actually have it on your, on your pricing page there. You are listed per member and per location. For everybody listening in, could you just like sort of clarify that? For a moment? Yeah, well, so uh, we are a very typical SaaS. So software as a service, uh, very um, typical traditional uh, business model we charge per uh, member. So for example, if you have uh, 400 members co-working space, you probably uh, should pay us about six, $600 euro uh, or pounds. Mm -hmm. um, however, for some, for some customers uh, that have multiple buildings uh, and uh, large organizations, usually the per member pricing is a little bit difficult for them to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, so they'd rather prefer to have a per location or per building uh, basically pricing. So we'll fix the price at, at certain um, amount and then we'll say, okay, that's a, that's a fixed price and then you can go unlimited in terms of members. And that's also probably useful uh, for, uh, for, for some guys because um, right now, at least before COVID, <laughs> uh, the, the scale of things uh, grew. So basically the, the flexible buildings and the corking spaces uh, became massive. So uh, the new spaces are usually in the thousands of people rather than historically, they used to be like 100 uh, desks or something. Yeah. Interesting. Very good. Maybe you could tell us because it's a very interesting, you know, target, right? Co-working spaces um, as, a, as, a, as a client. Could you tell us, you know, how do they, what's the journey, the buying journey or the top acquisition channels that you found to win? Um, people from co-working spaces to be interested in learning about office R&D, like what are the typical channels? 
Yeah, that's a, that's the topic of the day for us as well. So <laughs> uh, that's part of the, of the growth journey is to reinvent uh, your uh, your channels. So far, what's been working for us um, is is really inbound and inside sales team uh, powered by a, a very strong marketing team. Mm-hmm. So because the market is still very early in in its development and also it's very fragmented, although we hear uh, a lot about the big guys like WeWork and Regis and Notel, actually these are like a really small chunk of of the entire uh, market. It's very fragmented because it's real estate. So you have a lot of small players, like imagine a, a restaurant. So yes, you do have uh, McDonald's and and and, and Domino's, but uh, then you have an explosion of of smaller um, couple locations or a single site um, um, operators. And because of this size and and and, and fragmentation of the market, it's really uh, the inbound uh, works well because you can relatively easily target them in terms of marketing content, uh, SEO optimization, and a little bit of a paid uh, and, and that kind of stuff, blend it in a whole uh, marketing um, um, strategy. Mm-hmm. And then have a, a, a very good inside sales team that can convert uh, um, uh, uh, the customers that sign up for a demo. Very good. And that's been working for us uh, very well uh, for the last years. However, um, we are now in the process of, of rethinking if maybe uh, outbound and, and, and more proactive direct sales can also unlock uh, new opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, uh, that's the big discussion right now uh, with the board and with the team. Very, very interesting. Um, since we're sticking a little bit to inbound, since this is your current, current model, what role would you say does the website play for client acquisition? Sorry, I, I missed that look, sorry. No worries. So since we were talking about inbound, um, maybe you could describe a little bit the role of the website uh, right. for client acquisition. Yeah, well, well that's, uh, that's the number one and most important thing uh, you can ever uh, think of. <laughs> so, uh, even, even during COVID, so when we, um, when we stopped uh, our marketing budget just uh, in, in, in March when, when everyone was uh, scared uh, what's going to happen with, uh, with the business world. Um, mm-hmm. We were all expecting a complete meltdown and, and collapse. <laughs> Didn't mm-hmm. happen, but there is still time. <laughs> um, we cut our marketing budget completely except the investment uh, in the website. That means we, we kept improving, we kept investing in um, in, in, in all sorts of things that can uh, streamline the, the top of the funnel. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's the most important element. Uh, and and uh, yeah. Interesting. And since you're describing that, that you put still, you know, a lot of investment into the website, where would you say is the major strength of the website? Is it the ability to convert somebody once they're on the page? Or is it sort of the quality of the leads that it's producing or maybe maybe more holistically the user experience, like where do you see a strength of the website? I, th- I think for us, something that we hear very often is, is, is how you convey uh, the brand. So the mm-hmm. brand awareness is, is where um, we see huge benefit from the website. So, so for example, we, at some point we change completely our websites uh, and our brand actually overall, like, um, for the whole um, rebranding experience, uh, and then when we when we went to 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 couple of events like industry events, everyone was was talking about how cool is the new website and the brand mm-hmm. and the colors and the feel that you uh, you basically get uh, on the website. So I think at least from uh, for our industry, uh, the user experience, the overall look and feel uh, of the website is hugely important. Mm-hmm. Um, so we are trying to invest a lot uh, in this uh, in, in in this respect. So uh, trying to make it really beautiful and uh, and, and 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 just stand out. Um, mm-hmm. And where would you see? Since we're talking about it from the one side, but from the other side, where would you maybe see most room for improvement? Like, is it maybe the conversion rate, the quality? Like, where where 
where do you see the major room for improvement on the website? I think, yeah, the conversion rate definitely is something that, uh, that can be improved and that's a constant battle for uh, the marketing team. Um, I, I, I think that's, that's also probably a very difficult uh, one. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a very difficult exercise. Um, I'm not sure if we actually, and, and, and speaking of which, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely going to check out what you guys uh, <laughs> in, in a, in a, in a a big detail, but uh, um, yeah, I, I think the conversion rates uh, can be uh, can be improved dramatically for us as well. Um, mm -hmm. We have a lot of um, people, uh, a lot of visitors, and people actually uh, coming to the website, um, and we have an extremely um, high percentage of close rate after you sign up for yeah. uh, for a demo. But in between, there is a big gap, uh, yeah. which, uh, yeah, uh, we should definitely look into it uh, with more. Um, Makes a lot of sense. Very interesting. Um, is there something that you've tried already to improve conversions? Is there, like you mentioned, your team, are they running experiments or? Probably, uh, but to be honest, I'm not very much aware. Uh, I know that they do a lot of A-B tests um, in, um, and, and, and they measure everything. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have uh, that much of a detail there. That's fine. Great. So maybe coming back to the to the product, right? Um, for everybody who's listening in, maybe if you could summarize sort of the, the the competitive advantage, like how you sort of stand out in in the market. Maybe somebody who's trying to get a picture of um, sort of you know the the offer of Office R and D. Yeah. Well, so I'll just quickly summarize what the product looks like. So we do have two major. Um, modules or, or, or components of, of, of the product. So one side is the operators uh, management uh, platform. So mm -hmm. this is like a, a full um, ERP or CRM system for uh, these operators. So basically you can manage the entire customer lifecycle there from, from lead to revenue, the entire billing, payment processing and, and the whole lot. Um, it's more, it's, it's very much like a gym membership management uh, platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the, the other part of, of, of the platform is really uh, the member experience. So we put a lot of effort into a um, few tools uh, that help the, the coworking members uh, be more engaged uh, with the space. So that's a fully white label member app, uh, mobile app, and also a fully white label uh, web portal. Uh, visitor app, uh, so thing that you put uh, on a tablet uh, on the front desk. Uh, also, meeting room displays apps and uh, that, that that also run on tablets. So this whole digital experience of the customers is where we truly differentiate and stand out from uh, from the competition. So um, we try to provide the most um, pleasant uh, and, and, and overall high quality experience uh, for the end members. So basically for the customers of our customers. Mm -hmm. And this is something of course very important uh, for them because uh, the co-working as a whole is, is a, how do you provide the office as a service? How do you provide the best possible workspace experience uh, to, to customers? And obviously the digital experience. So how easy it is to to book a room, to pay your bill and, and so forth. Uh, that's, uh, that's key. Uh, so we try to invest uh, a lot of effort uh, there. And also on the other side, um, for our platform, reliability, stability, and the depth of certain features is extremely important. Um, so billing, you don't want to mess up with invoices and, <laughs> and, and you cannot allow any 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 issue uh, there, uh, so we try to invest heavily and truly differentiate in how stable and how quality is our. Um, they sound basic, but actually are very complex uh, functionalities like billing and and bookings. Very interesting. So that really gives a good summary of the product. Maybe um, one quick look behind the curtain um, of Office R&D. Um, you mentioned that there is an inbound sales team. You mentioned marketing. Could you um, give us an idea of how sales and marketing teams are structured at the moment? Yes. So we have a CRO uh, uh, who's, who's overseeing sales marketing success. Mm -hmm. sales success. Um, so 
basically uh, there is a sales lead and there is a marketing lead and then the CRO. Um, they actually work really well together. Uh, it used to be pretty rough at the beginning because they were kind of more of a silos and, and, <laughs> and, and talking different languages, like not having unified perception of what's an MQL, so marketing qualified lead, what's a sales qualified lead. So there was like a massive disjoint uh, there uh, and their targets, uh, they were not aligned. This is uh, the time when I was managing the whole thing and I didn't have good experience in this. Uh, and when we, when we got our CRO, this is really changed. So they started talking the same uh, language. They unified uh, all, the, um, all the terminology. So what's, what's an MQL, what's an, uh, an opportunity. And, and the marketing team actually started to have uh, sales targets that mm -hmm. are revenue, that are yep. opportunities created and deals opened and that kind of stuff. And that, that completely changed the game because they started to talk every single day <laughs> about these uh, things so having, having the same goal is is is, is definitely uh the way to go we also implemented okrs but that's mm -hmm. probably not that much relevant uh which usually helps to to better align uh, although it's very difficult to to pull it off <laughs> we, we 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 we're running okrs for like probably six quarters and we still struggle to build high quality <laughs> so i'm not sure if, if it's us the problem or or maybe the model is too difficult i don't know <laughs> i've been a googler for four years so i know the experience <laughs> yeah. yeah especially in some, in some teams it's extremely difficult <laughs> it's like, Jesus, I don't know where to start. <laughs> Very good. Cool. Yeah. Since we're slowly coming to an end of the interview, I would love to jump into the rapid fire questions. Um, it's basically a couple of short answers about yourself and a couple of quick answers. Are you ready for those? Yes. Sure. What's the last book you read? Uh, Why Nations Fail. Mm -hmm. What's the one single thing your company is focused on the most at the moment? Growth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what's the last thing that kept you awake at night about the company? Uh, enterprise sales. Mm -hmm. If there would be no boundaries in technology, what would be one thing you want to have fixed for your company today? Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> if there is no boundary to technology. What would you have fixed? Uh, I really don't know. Damn it, I should have known this. <laughs> That's okay. You might be able to think about that afterwards. Um, last question, actually. Um, if today would be your first day running office R&D, right? What would mm -hmm. be one advice that you would give yourself? Um, focus on, uh, on, on, on hiring uh, the, the most experienced people that you can possibly find for every role. Very, very good. So Miro, thanks a lot for being on the show with us today to give us an insight into what Office R&D is all up to, how you guys um, have been putting in a very, very significant growth in the company. So uh, I want to give you the last word. Um, if somebody forgets everything about this interview today, what would be one thing they should remember about Office R&D? Oh, about, about Office R&D, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I think that, uh, yeah, uh, flexible working will be the future mm -hmm. of working. Very, very good. Miro, thanks for being part of the show today. Thank you, Lucas.